What's up YouTube? Here we are back with another awesome auto vlog and today we are in the new garage. Um, I don't know if you noticed in the last video, there's a little bit different background scenery than it's normally there. I recently moved back in February and so that's kind of the reason for a little bit of a slow few months with the videos. But things are going to start picking up here now that I'm finally getting settled in. Got the garage uh, somewhat in order. Here's the M4. I haven't done a whole lot with the M4 lately. I do have a valve cover install video that I need to edit for this but a lot of the stuff has been focused mainly on the GX just because the GX needs a lot more loving there's a lot more things failing on the GX such as the speakers which is why we're here today and here's the FZ07 which never really makes it in the vlogs uh, I ride this thing a lot but I don't actually do a lot of filming on it so I need to do a little bit more content with this but let's get back to the GX and we'll talk about the speakers here uh, as we've seen two videos ago in vlog 28, we did the subwoofer replacement. That was using the SCAR sub. That was a dual 4 ohm voice coil. Uh, we wired that in series to get the 8 ohms to match up for our Mark Levinson sound. And since then, I've got a ton of you guys reaching out in, in Instagram and also just in the comments section alone. And everybody's really wanting the videos of the door speakers, uh, which I had mentioned in that video, which I eventually would work on but uh, since I got such a large amount of feedback with people interested in seeing the door speaker videos I decided let me make a selection on door speakers and I'll prioritize that video ahead of most other things so here we are we got two different speakers I wanted to kind of take a moment to talk about these speakers this is a DS18 this is a 6x9 so this is a replacement for the front door speakers these are also an 8 ohm speaker which is great there are not many options out there for 8 ohm speakers so it's kind of a little bit of a struggle to find something uh, that fit the bill and was 8 ohms so I went with these they look kind of cool I don't know what the quality is going to be like um, but we'll see if it's bad then I'll let you know and we'll uh, I won't recommend them but if it's great then I'll let you know as well so yeah here it is this is the speaker it's got a cool look to it. It's got a nice red cone to it and a, and a red grill on the front, which I'm not going to use the red grill because that might interfere with the door panel. But yeah, here it is. Take this grill off so you can kind of get a better look at the cone itself. So there it is. Nice red. This will be hidden so you won't even be able to see it at all, but it's got a nice like metallic red finish to it, which is kind of neat. But yeah, these are an 8 ohm speaker and I think they're going to be a lot better quality than the OEM speakers that are in there just because they're newer and I feel like the reconing of the factory speakers is a good option but I just I wanted to go with something new just like I was with the rear speaker so this is going to be the replacement for that and then for the rear doors they are a six and a half inch speaker and I went with SCAR again uh, for these since I really like that SCAR subwoofer. SCAR unfortunately doesn't make a 6x9 in 8 ohm configuration so I couldn't go with SCAR for the front doors but I decided to stick with SCAR for the rear. Yeah this is the, these are a loudspeaker so I got a couple of people asking questions why I didn't go and replace the door speakers with the same sub that I used for the rear and that is because of the frequency response. The frequency response of the sub that I put into the back is a real low frequency and this is kind of going to cover the mid-range frequencies and so I really wanted to keep something mid-range just so that I'm not drowning myself in bass. But yeah this is SCAR's 6.5 inch 8 ohm mid-range loudspeaker and I think it shows it on the back. Yeah, there's a 8 ohm indicator there on the back. So, yeah, other than that, I guess the only other things that I really need to talk about for the install are these uh, Toyota adapters for the front speakers. The rear speakers will just factory bolt right in, but for the front on the 6x9s, we'll need these adapters. These plates will just kind of screw in to the factory location. There's a plastic adapter on the 6x9s up front in the stock speakers and then these adapter plates will go on 
and then we'll mount our 6x9 in there like so and that'll mount up nice. Um, I got this wiring, these two wiring harnesses. I needed four but I only grabbed two because I didn't realize there was only two of these in a pack. I thought it was all four. I don't think I'll use them for the the rear doors just because these have a wider terminal and these have like a keyed one smaller one's larger uh, which these six by nines that'll work great for uh, but for this it won't actually just slide right on this terminal so I think for the rear doors I'm gonna actually use the factory wiring harness and just cut it and solder them on here and that will do exactly what I need so in the last video where I did the wood trim delete where I took off all the wood trim pieces and wrapped them in vinyl you saw how I took apart the door. Taking apart these doors in the GX are super easy. I was actually really excited to see how easy it was to take apart. I almost threw the speakers in and did a double header video at the time, but I didn't want to sacrifice the quality of the video. So, you know, it's really straightforward. You just need a flathead screwdriver to pop some of the panels off <coughs> and a Phillips head screwdriver. And that's literally all you need. There's three screws that hold the door on and then some clips that you just need to pull out. So we'll pop the door panels off and then we'll take the factory speaker out, put these in, we'll wire them up and this will be a super straightforward, easy install. And I think a lot of you can do this yourself. You know, it won't take long, maybe an hour max. Let's go install these into the GX and we'll see how they sound. As you can see, the uh, factory speakers, the cone is completely missing, uh, or not the cone, the, uh, the foam connecting to the cone in the outer rim, completely gone all the way around, just shaking in its own little case here all by itself, just levitating. Uh, so yeah, these are, we're definitely in need of some replacement, so let's swap out and put the new ones in. So these uh, adapters that were here, as you can see, are now cut off. Um, the adapters that were supposed to be for Toyota, I mean, this piece up here, this clip is the correct adapter to fit into this harness, so that part's nice. But the prongs here for fitting onto the speaker terminals are not universal and it's different for the speakers that I currently have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these, throw them back, and I've got uh, soldering station set up here so I'm just going to solder those in myself a um, little bit of a pain but it's quick to just heat the solder up real quick and and get a better connection uh, I just didn't trust uh, fidgeting with the other ones and modifying them and then risking uh, not having a good connection there or it falling off so I'm going to just solder those up real quick and then we'll move on to the rest of the speakers So one thing I didn't think about was uh, screws. So the speaker mount screws that were already in the stock speaker, those are too narrow and they don't self tap into these, this plastic bracket well. But I did have this Harbor Freight U-clip and screw pack that just coincidentally um, had some perfect sized uh, screws. I'm not sure if you can get that on camera. Had some perfect sized screws that self tapped into that plastic and that worked out perfect so I'm going to use those but other than that all we got to do is put this harness back together here I'm thinking I'm going to tuck this up and around so we don't get any rattling and tape it uh, 
All right, so now that'll kind of hold itself in place and uh, you won't have any rattling from that rubbing up against anything. So next, all we gotta do is put this door panel on and we'll go over and finish up the rest of the doors. As you can see, the uh, factory speakers for the rear here actually are in really good shape. Um, I really didn't need to replace these. Look-wise, there's not a whole lot of difference between the SCAR and the stock speaker, so um, I would say that the SCAR has a bigger, uh, beefier magnet, which might give it a better frequency response. Um, since I've already gotten things taken apart, I'm going to go ahead and put the SCAR one in anyways, because it's a newer speaker and it's only a matter of time between now and whenever this thing decides to go. So I'm just going to replace it anyways. Uh, if you can see here, there's kind of an interesting setup. There's a little tweeter built into this front uh, cone here. So I'm going to leave that intact, slide this into place, and then come down over top and uh, should just bolt right in. All right, so we got two issues here. Issue one, this tab here, and these tabs um, right here, this tab here, and then this one here, are causing the speaker not to sit flush. The stock speaker's got a weird shape to it that's not completely circular, so I just went through with an X-Acto knife on this side, and I just cut it. And it cuts really easy, it's just rubber. Just kind of shave that off so it sits flush. And then... And then for here, uh, you just take a, any kind of blade, like a saw or a Dremel, and just cut this little tab off. There we go. So there's one there and then there's another one right here. And there you go. So now you can see, you know, you got a flush surface here, flush surface down there, and a flush one right here where that grommet was. And uh, that enables the new SCAR speaker to sit flush. And then this tweeter will go on top of that factory screws that held the speaker in don't actually work for this because uh, the depth on the lip of the SCAR speaker versus the stock one is a little bit thicker and it's just enough so that it doesn't bite on the threads so I got these number 10 screws they're three quarter inch length these are gonna be perfect these are metal screws but they just really need to tap into this plastic uh, so these will give just enough length to hold on this front tweeter and uh, should be good to go. So number 10, three quarter inch screws, tighten them down. All right, so I'm gonna throw this door panel on and after that, I think I'm just gonna skip. Uh, this is, you got to see the gist of the front speaker and you got to see what I did for the back speaker. So I'm not gonna bore you with repeating that information. So we'll put the door panel on and then we'll cut back and uh, Give these things a sound review. Alright, here we are. So, all four speakers are installed. The front ones were the easiest. They just kind of bolt right into place. Uh, the back ones were a little bit more difficult with having to cut. Uh, there's two little tabs, but I got a nice flush seal on the speaker all the way around. So, that was kind of my biggest worry is I wanted to make sure it was a tight seal because you want to 
have all of those uh, speaker seams fitting tight. And if you get air in between there, it's just gonna hinder the sound and make things not sound so great. So definitely make sure everything is real tight. Uh, don't break anything because it's plastic, but tighten things up real snug because there's gonna be movement from the speaker and you want things to be nice and tight. So here we are in the car. All four speakers are installed. We also got the scar in the back. I'm gonna use my friend Max's music just so I don't have any copyright issues, but I'm gonna give this a listen and see how it sounds. good um, anything's gonna sound better than broken speaker cones but it sounds great much heavier bass now Wow Okay, so that was a pretty good first test. I think that the speaker quality is way better than broken speaker cones. Comparing these to some really high-end speakers, I don't know if my ears would be able to tell a difference, but this is an awesome replacement. Uh, I'm not trying to thump super hard. This is my daily driver. I listen to music a lot, but I'm not trying to just like blast it and have like this insane audio system. Like it still sounds very good. I'm very impressed with the sound so far. I think I'm gonna mess around with the equalizer here a little bit and get the the rear balance and the right and left balance all set up. And I'm pretty sure there's an equalizer setting in here too that I can go in and, and kind of equalize things out. I think I wanna tune these a little bit differently than the way they currently are. It feels a little heavy to the front and I feel like the bass is a little strong and it's tuning out some of those high pitch tones. Uh, so I'm gonna mess around with that a little bit and then come back and let you know kind of what happens from there. All right, so I did a bunch of listening with a couple of different styles of music. I listened to some EDM, some rock music, some rap, and I just played around with the equalizer settings. It made a world of a difference. So let me turn this around and show you. All right, so for all of you who also have the Phoenix Automotive head unit, there is a very awesome feature here, which is a frequency based equalizer, and it's 16 channels. So this upper end of the scale going from left to right across the top, that is your lower frequencies, and then it continues over here at the bottom left and works its way all the way up here to the right, which is the highest frequency. And you can see there's a 20,000 on the bottom of that uh, tab, and that's 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. And you can see the spectral view here. This is the frequency spectrum of the equalizer right now. And you can see there's a, a power profile, and that power profile is a curve that I adjusted. I just kind of went through and I'll be honest, a little bit of just trial and error with my ears. I adjusted, there's this little notch here. I felt like I needed that notch. There was too much mid in that frequency range. That's around, uh, what's that, 1250 hertz. So that for some reason f sounded a lot better. And then I notched down up at 20 kilohertz I have a little bit of a curve down there because there's a little bit too much highs there as well. Over here, I wanted a little bit deeper bass. So I bumped up that 20 hertz region uh, and then kind of dipped it down a little bit in the middle there around the 31 to 50 just to so it was not such heavy bass. And then this midsection, I don't know how I came about that curve. It was kind of a little bit trial and error like I said. But I will tell you what, this is an awesome feature in the Phoenix Automotive head unit. I'm sure most aftermarket head units that people have will have an equalizer. I can't remember the stock GX470 head unit and whether or not that had a good equalizer in it. The cool thing is, is there's a save button right there that enables you to save this profile. So I have this saved under a custom profile so that I now can have this, you know, if it ever resets itself, I can recall that setting and uh, have that nice uh, profile setup. So 
One more thing uh, I wanted to mention while I'm in here, go back. This is under this DSP menu. There is a balance. So this is gain per speaker. So these were by default set to the max setting, which is zero. I think it's zero dB of gain. I dropped the front speakers down to minus 10 and dropped the rear speakers down to minus four. And so what that does is that gives us a little bit more gain on these back speakers so that it's balanced a little bit better. I will mention that these front speakers are really good and they have a lot of deep bass and they sound very powerful and they kind of almost not overpowered but they definitely are a little more intense than the uh, rear door speakers so I just dropped the gain down on those just so I have a nice balance but yeah let me uh, switch back around and talk a little bit more. So overall, this equalizer setting that's available in the Phoenix Automotive head unit came in handy. Uh, I was able to just completely tune the speakers to sound exactly how I wanted them to sound. And now the sound quality is way better. I can't say that I, I, I had many other options when it came to eight ohms for six by nine speakers and for the six and a half for these rear doors. But this sounds amazing. I think it was relatively affordable. I think it was under $200, like around like maybe 160 or 180 ish dollars for all four speakers and the adapters. Just generally speaking, it's a relatively inexpensive audio upgrade. I don't know what the Mark Levinson sound system sounded like in its peak condition because I bought this vehicle used. So, you know, I'm dealing with what I heard from it, which was. I had blown speakers because of the foam was deteriorated and just completely disconnected from the cone on both front doors. These back rear doors actually weren't in that bad a condition, but I wanted to replace them anyways. And I also had a blown sub in the back. So I'm comparing this to what my scenario was, and this was by far a huge upgrade for me. I don't know what the state of everybody else's sound system is in their GX's but if you're in the scenario that I'm in which all these speakers were blown this is an upgrade the sound is incredible the bass is very very heavy and it sounds almost like the 6x9's up front almost sound like subwoofers so it feels really bassy but yet the troubles are nice and crisp and clear so it's really nice to hear all of it together and just a note in general these back uh, scar speakers I highly recommend doing what I did and staying and keeping those tweeters. I could have cut those out and it would have made things quicker, but I had to get longer screws and I was able to keep those factory speaker covers that had a tweeter built into it. And I can tell, like I just sat in the back seat while I was doing this whole equalization and I could hear the highs coming out of those tweeters really crisp and clear. And it really made for a nice sound back there. I don't know what would have happened had I cut those out. I think it might have degraded the sound in the high frequency range, obviously because they're tweeters and that's what they're tuned for. But keeping them was, was honestly, I think, a really good decision. I think most people, if you're doing this, you should keep those. And just another heads up too, those were spliced in in parallel with the speaker. So I think what you're doing there is if you were to cut those out, you're going to change the impedance because it was a parallel... Uh, connection with the door speaker and the tweeter and if you go or remove those you just don't connect them at all you've now changed the impedance of that circuit and you're gonna potentially have issues I mean you might be fine and even some of these people I see doing forum speakers in their cars they might be fine they might completely be okay you know a year a year or two could go by and everything sounds fine it's just that when you go with a lower impedance speaker your power driven at the amplifier is much higher because of the lower uh, impedance load that's there. So your amp is going to be driving a lot heavier. You know, it may be fine for a year or two, and it may be fine for the life of the vehicle. I, I really don't know. I didn't do failure analysis on it, but eventually heat could build up and degradation of the amplifier could happen. And then eventually you could have a blown uh, amplifier. And then you're kind of at that point having to go figure out now you're going to have to buy new speakers again, an amplifier. And in general, I just think it's best to stick with the 8 ohms just because the speaker setup was designed for 8 ohms and it's just a lot easier to just keep it that way. If you want to go like real crazy and get some like high end aftermarket subwoofer for the back and you want to get new door speakers and go with something really high end because you can't get 8 ohms in those higher end speakers, maybe you have a particular brand you like, 
then in that scenario I just recommend just bypassing the Mark Levinson amplifier and getting an aftermarket amp to drive everything at the 4 ohms that you're looking for. So in general this was just a great upgrade for the car. The speakers sound amazing. The quality of the sound in here is a thousand times better than it was just earlier today. I went to breakfast this morning and I was just like gosh I can't wait to finally get rid of this raspy rattly speaker sound. And it's finally here. Relatively inexpensive. Uh, hopefully these steps to do this were pretty straightforward. If I miss anything and you have questions about what I did in the install, reach out to me in the comments, reach out to me on Instagram. I've helped plenty of people out in the past that have been doing some of the same installs and they got stuck halfway through or maybe one of the details I described wasn't that straightforward and they were getting ready to do the install but they wanted to clarify something with me. So if you have questions or you need help when you get stuck, hit me up on Instagram or write something in the comment section. I respond to everybody's comments. I'm keeping an eye on that. I'm keeping an eye on Instagram. So I'm going to end it here. Thanks to everyone who stuck with me this long. Anybody who's a new subscriber to the channel or an old subscriber, but you're interested in more content, there's going to be tons of GX content coming out here in the next couple months. Uh, there's going to be some M4 content, stuff that I filmed in the past, and there's going to be also some new stuff going as well. If there's anything that I haven't covered yet, modification wise, Feel free to comment down below. Let me know what kind of modifications you want to see done to the GX. I've got tons of stuff in mind and I just want to space things out, like I said in the last video, to be a little bit budget friendly because I know a lot, of, a lot of us are using these vehicles as kind of like a nice modification platform. So it may not be your highest priority. It may be more of a budget vehicle for you, which in my case, it's a budget vehicle. Uh, the M4 and the motorcycle are kind of my like higher end cars that I'm willing to spend more money on so I'm trying to do everything I can to this car to increase its uh, value and make it feel like a nicer quality vehicle but I'm doing it on a budget and I know a lot of you are as well so hopefully some of these videos help you out in upgrading your GX470. Well I'm going to quit yapping and end it here. Thank you again so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.